30 right now. I'm going to count to about 30 seconds. I know we have folks coming in. Hope everyone is doing well and that your families are all safe and healthy. Thank you for taking time out of your very busy schedules and days and summer and almost back to school and all of that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Give it about another minute. Okay, I will officially call this meeting to order at 1231. Happy August and happy summer. I know we have a full agenda, but it's good to see everyone. I will entertain a mo um, I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Thank you, Ben. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Okay, thank you. All in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Excellent, thank you. Welcome, welcome to all of our commissioners, guests and staff and anyone else zooming in from home. It's good to have you. Um, I will now entertain any requests for continuance. And I do believe we have non-agenda public comment uh, from Janet Russell. I have a written statement from Janet, but I just want to double check. Janet, are you on the Zoom? I don't believe so. If, if you are, I'm going to give you her a moment. All right, I will go ahead and read our uh, public comment from Ms. Russell. Uh, just as COVID cases started rising again, contactless pickup was discontinued at the Carmel Valley branch, as well as other branches of the library. The Delta variant, which carries a viral load 1,000 times the original strain of COVID is now dominant and breakthrough infections in fully vaccinated people are rising. Please reinstate contactless pickup and protect us from COVID. Um, thank you, Ms. Russell, for submitting your non-agenda public comment. It is noted. Um, I know we're all consumers of news and I know Misty and her team um, and many of us in our day jobs are tracking that very closely and also following um, what our local public guidelines are. Uh, but we do thank you for taking the time to uh, voice your request to reinstate contactless pickup. All right, moving forward to the Friends of the Library report. I see two of our friends online. Welcome, Anne, and we will toss it to Joan. Welcome, Joan. Thanks. Thanks, Wendy. Um, the big news, of course, for many of our friends group has been the reopening of additional branch libraries recently. Um, for a number of chapters, um, interestingly, reopening has posed um, some significant challenges as they attempt to re-engage volunteers and board members while forging relationships with a lot of new staff, including branch managers. Um, as I reported previously, a number of Friends chapters have held outdoor book sales, some monthly, some weekly, and these have been quite popular among customers and do help engage volunteers. And even some chapters at libraries which have remained closed, ex closed except for curbside pickup, pickup service, have been able to hold successful sales and even recruit new members, which is, which is encouraging. Um, several chapters have now reopened their used bookstores at 50% capacity. Um, this means that in some cases, only one or two people are allowed inside at a time because the spaces are pretty tiny. Um, the Greater um, Friends of the San Diego Public Library held an outdoor book sale in June, which was quite successful, especially considering the limited space available. Um, on the, this tiny lot that is the University Heights Branch Library. Um, although the, the consensus was it was an awful lot of work for um, fairly limited return. Um, the um, Greater, um, Greater Friends also um, had a robust presence at the recent North Park Book Fair, which was a, which was a brand new street fair in North Park a couple of weeks ago. The pace never let up. In addition, in addition to selling books and raising significant funds, um, we were able to recruit many new members for quite a few of the chapters. 
Um, so it was a good way to kind of be out in the community. And it's something that pre-COVID we had started doing more and taking up, you know, taking advantage of these sorts of opportunities to get the word out about the library and the friends among people who, um, who love books. Um, our online book sales continue to bring in um, some income for the greater friends and also um, several of our chapters. Um, we are in the process of renovating approximately half of our book sale space on the um, lower level of the University Heights Branch Library um, with new, in quotes, new donated library shelving. And this will increase our capacity and it's expected to eventually make our, our used book sales more efficient. Um, so at some point before too much longer, we do hope to be able to reopen our legendary monthly book sales. Um, and hopefully this will be bigger and better than ever. Um, in view of the very concerning public health situation, meetings for both the, um, the Friends Board and our monthly meetings with chapter leaders will continue to be held virtually. I, I know that some chapters are, are looking at or have been doing some um, hopefully safe um, in-person meeting, but for our larger organization, we, we feel it's not prudent. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Joan, or I should say thank you, Dr. Reese. Um, and really, again, just thank you to all of the friends for really just sticking with it. Um, online book sales, you know, reopening as you can. And I know we're all looking forward getting closer to the brighter future and it's coming. I believe that strongly. Um, we're just re all remaining flexible. So thank you. That was a great report. Um, okay, moving forward. We have our lovely foundation family here today. Thank you, Charlie. And thank you, Patrick. Patrick. Thank you, Wendy, and it's good seeing everyone um, after a brief uh, break. Um, I will make this brief, but um, just want to let you know, of course, aside from raising funds and awareness and advocacy for our library, a big, uh, a big part of our focus and our priority continues to be the library master plan. So I want to start off by thanking you, Wendy, and the commissioners for allowing the presentation of the uh, draft of the preliminary findings. Um, of the phase one uh, report of the library master plan at the June 2nd uh, commission meeting. That has since, as you can imagine, gotten quite a bit of um, feedback, which is exactly what we wanted, and it's gotten quite a bit of attention. And, uh, and so we're rounding out the final part of the uh, draft phase one document. And so um, I just wanted to give you all an update on that. There will be more dates and, uh, and specific information to follow, but just so that this is in the record. Today, I'd also to let you know, we're beginning to schedule council member meetings to share uh, this, the preliminary, uh, or not, I guess it's not the preliminary, the draft, final document for the phase one um, of this uh, of the master plan with our council members. We intend to have this draft complete um, no later than August 9th, giving Misty and her team an opportunity to spend some time with it and comment and report back to uh, G4 and Carson Block Technology, after which the document will be made available on a special web page on the library site. And so we're working with Curtis and, and Catherine to get that um, taken care of. Um, we will, that, so that'll be made available on the library site August 24th at 4 p.m. We will be hosting a, um, a virtual town hall presentation of the uh, draft final document. It will be presented as a recorded presentation uh, by Jill Ayers and Carson Block from uh, G4 and Carson Block Technology, after which immediately following, there will be a live opportunity for uh, public comment. Uh, we will also make sure that that uh, recording is up on the library site, and we're going to be able to share that along with the document itself with, um, with our community, uh, with planning uh, commissions, uh, community town councils, that kind of thing. We're also going to host a second virtual town hall on September 18th. Uh, I believe at 2 p.m. So one is during the weekday, a little later in the afternoon. The other one is during a weekend, a little earlier in the day to ensure that those who want to attend would be able to. But this does not preclude the public from being able to go onto the library site where the document will be housed and to be able to make public comment there. 
We will be uh, presenting this, and by we, I mean sort of the proverbial we, Misty and her team, the foundation, anybody else that needs to, uh, uh, will be able to present uh, the September 22nd Public Safety and Livable Neighborhoods Committee, um, after which uh, we will continue to accept public comment and solicit public comment. We have a communications plan designed specifically to reach as many neighborhood and community members as we possibly can. Uh, October, I believe we may end up back at the uh, Public Safety and Livable Neighborhoods uh, Committee. Likely around that time, November or December, we will be presenting it to you all at either the November or December meeting with the hope that we end up uh, with this being presented to council no later than January. And, um, and again, uh, our hope as with the community survey, we are making this public feedback uh, available, this public feedback phase available to everyone and anyone who wants to participate in lending their voice, not only to the development thus far, but to, uh, to what these findings are and the way that this draft is being presented. Um, so that we are presenting to not only you, but to the committee and to the council, um, you know, really the best, the best that uh, the best communication and look that our community has to offer when it comes to the library. There will be more information in September. I'll probably update you a little bit more if there are some further details. Um, but we will be able to make sure that we get all of the requisite links and information and specifics. Uh, to everyone here throughout this process. It should be a busy fall. Um, but uh, yeah, so that is, that's a key priority. We'll keep you updated. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know um, either now or at any time. Uh, I'm always available to have a conversation about this. Great, thank you, Patrick. Um, really nice job. Thank you for presenting kind of the rough timeline of the baby being yeah. birthed and born. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit like birthing a 20 pound baby, um, yeah. but thank, thank you to the public as well for participating in the survey. And I just wanna urge um, everyone on the Zoom or that may be watching it, just to reiter reiterate what Patrick mentioned about um, the feedback phase. This is not the foundation's master plan. This is not the commission's master plan. This is the community's master plan. And um, just great job and pulling together um, the feedback uh, Patrick and Misty and everyone involved. Um, this is your, the community's master plan. And it's really, really exciting. I know we're excited to talk to council about it. Um, and the commission will be excited um, to hear the final presentation. And of course, let us know what we can do to further this along. Um, that sounds great. And I have those dates written down for the virtual town hall. So that's Tuesday, August 24th at four, if I got that right. Is yep. that right, Patrick? Yep. And Saturday, um, September 18th. So yep. I like the nod to both the weekday and the weekend. Yeah. Any questions for Patrick or the foundation? Right, thank you so much, Patrick, uh, to thank you and the you. team and the board and the volunteers, um, excellent presentation. All right, let's move forward then with uh, the consent agenda report on library construction projects. That goes to you, Misty, thanks. Okay, I do not know if Raul is here. I am here, hi. Do you have an update or do you want I me do. to? I know you just got back. So. That's okay, I, I got the update right here. <laughs> All right, and we Yay, are very happy. Yes, we're you. very happy hi, to have everyone? Raul back. He is a new um, daddy, has a Raul. baby boy that was born in ju early July. So we are very happy to have him back. So I'll Congratulations, <laughs> that's wonderful. He doesn't miss a be beat. <laughs> thank you, Raul. Thank no congratulations. So, thank you so much. Um, I have a few updates. Uh, with, we're going to start with Pacific Highlands Ranch. Uh, I believe last time we mentioned that the uh, city deemed the contract uh, lowest responsible bidder non-responsive. Um, so this update uh, consists of the city's contract specialist rejecting the Pacific Highlands ranch uh, library contract bid. Uh, with that being said, uh, the solicitation was canceled and the project will be re-advertised at a later date. Um, 
and we're still working with with the design consultant and the city contracts team um, to get this out as soon as possible um, so it will it will delay uh, a few months uh, secondly the scripps Miramar ranch library parking lot expansion is in the final design phase it's currently over at the development services department um, getting a plan check review um, for the building permit and issuance of the environmental review report um, and that approval. So that is the update on construction projects. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Raul. Great report. And congratulations again, new Papa. Very exciting news on multiple levels. All right, I think it's back to you, Misty. Okay, so just a few updates for you. Um, just to, yeah, as you know, the budget update. So we are, um, we did get the budget to convert the positions, the hourly positions into benefited positions. And we're going to be doing that over this next fiscal year. It's about 175 positions that we need to hire for. So it's going to be a big process for us. Um, we are very fortunate in that we do have a lot of hourly employees um, that are perfect candidates for these benefited positions, but we will also have to add some additional staff. So we're working on that, trying to get that um, going as quickly as possible because that really is what um, the opening on Sundays and being able to restore to full services really hinges on us getting those positions filled. Um, I'll get to reopening, that's uh, in my, um, the second part in the agenda, but the um, SD access for all is continuing. So we are um, now doing hotspot lending. So we are lending Wi-Fi hotspots. We are also looking at lending laptops um, and we're starting a digital navigation program. So we've trained some staff that will then uh, train some other staff actually to provide kind of guidance and resource direction for people who need um, internet in their homes. And so we'll, we'll be able to participate in that. So really excited um, to be part of that. The Robert Frost Society, we had come to you and said that we are now the official home of the Robert Frost Society. So we're going to have, the foundation had this really excellent symposium um, and showed a film of, uh, a couple of months ago that was just phenomenal, but this is gonna be our first kind of in-person program and that's gonna be on August 14th at four o'clock. So we have uh, Robert um, Bernard Haas, who is the executive director of the um, Frost Society and Jim Hurley, who is the one that really is the catalyst for getting um, San Diego named as the home will be speaking. We have also uh, um, invited the new poet laureate, Ron Salisbury, to be there. So he has agreed to come and he will be speaking um, at the event as well. So we're really excited. It's going to be an event and a, a reception, but I think it'll be um, really excellent to finally have that officially kicked off for us. Um, also, what else is going on? So you're going to hear about the rebellion, rebelliousness breed project in the fall. So Moni and Mark are going to talk about that. Um, there's just one thing I wanted to share with you all. And this is, and I shared it with the trustees, the foundation trustees, but during the month of July, we had several pride um, story times in four different locations. And we had four um, drag queen story times. And, you know, we had such a very, very positive response, but we always get um, protesters to those events as well. And I just wanted to share um, with you a email that I received um, that I think kind of sums up why we do these types of programs and why it's so important. So um, it says, good day. I attended yesterday's story time event at Logan Heights with my two-year-old daughter. I got your contact information from literature distributed from San Diego Mass Resistance who were in front of the building. Their presence leads me to this communication. This event was phenomenal. Exposing my young children to brave human beings who are well aware of the cultural opposition to their sense of identity and nonetheless expressing themselves publicly in a kid-friendly educational format 
and in bright colors are precisely the type of role models I'm looking to show my young child. The fact that our own San Diego library is among the leaders of this brilliant idea fills my family with regional pride. Absolutely none of the ideas opposing this event proved to be true. The performers, Raquel Ida and Barbie Q, were perfectly appropriate for the audience and were splendidly wholesome. The literature I received opposing the event also pointed to the higher suicide and depression rates among transgender people. It is precisely these types of events that are part of the effort to combat those tragic numbers. Thank you for this event and I look forward to many more. Um, and we also had at that event, um, a young child who was about seven named Charlie and Charlie uses they, them pronouns. And Charlie wrote um, thank you letters and drew pictures that he that they presented to the Queens um, after the event. And they were just really excited to be celebrating Pride. And, you know, we do these programs for kids like Charlie. So I wanted you all uh, to hear the positive response and to hear the positive feedback that we got. And regardless of any opposition that we get, we are gonna continue to be uh, a place of inclusivity um, and really, uh, you know, celebrating everybody's diversity. So. Misty, I and think so, that's fantastic. Yeah. Amazing, makes so proud. brave. Yeah, yeah. Makes, I think it makes all of us proud. That's amazing. And we have an unbelievable LGBTQ committee uh, and just some really very passionate people that uh, take this on. And, you know, and the staff at these locations, they got a lot of really harsh responses from, from a, a very few people. Uh, but again, it was, you know, it, it's when you have that kind of response and you have that kind of positive impact on people, uh, you, can, you can kind of deal with the, um, the harsh words, <laughs> so, but, um, and so getting into the agenda, uh, reopening, so just wanted to give you an update on where we are, so we are at actually 28 locations, so we had 26 the beginning of July that opened, and then we were able to add University Heights and Kensington this past Saturday, uh, actually Saturday before, we were able to um, add them. So they are now open. So we have eight more to go uh, to get, we have to do some hiring. Those locations are pretty short staffed. We're hoping to get another location on August 9th. We're looking at North University, trying to get them open on August 9th, if everything goes well, but it really is going to be kind of uh, one at a time, it looks like as we get the staffing levels up for those locations, but, but aiming to have them by mid to late September to have everybody open Monday through Saturday. We started our new hours as well on the 31st, and those are Monday and Tuesday from 1130 to 8, and then Wednesday through Saturday from 930 to 6. We will not, that's a little bit of a change. Pre-COVID, we were open late on Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, but we moved to Monday, Tuesday because the staff really um, uh, preferred those hours. And, you know, we really wanna, and right now the staff are gonna have to work two nights a week. So we're trying to minimize, <laughs> you know, have the most uh, hours and be available uh, the most amount of time as we can for the public, but also kind of, um, you know, relieve a little of the burden. Uh, we are trying to get to where staff only have to work one night a week. And so we think that we'll be able to do that when we get everybody hired. We are looking Saturday, I mean, Sundays are, are really, we've got to hire some new positions before we can get Sundays open. But that will be, um, we'll look probably in the October timeframe is when we're anticipating and it will be uh, communities of concern first. So we'll start with Central Library and then Malcolm X, City Heights and Logan Heights will be the first locations uh, that will be open on Sunday. Uh, and then I think, you know, we're doing 
um, some limited indoor programming. Uh, people can book the meeting rooms again, and we're still at 50% capacity. So uh, we're gonna continue that for the foreseeable future um, until things really start to turn better and we get through this, uh, the Delta variant and get uh, you know, more, um, you know, uh, a little bit safer environment, but we're still taking things kind of slowly, still doing all of the cleaning and the safety protocols that we've been doing before, but we're excited to finally kind of have people back in the building. There's, there's nothing uh, sadder than a library that has no one in it. <laughs> so it is great to have the public back, so, but I'm happy to answer um, any questions. Or if there's any, uh... Misty, I have a question, and I have, sure. Again, thank you to you and your team. Um, there's just so much behind the scenes work that you all do. I know we're all pushing to get our libraries open, and, and that's what we're hearing from folks. Like, when can we come back yeah. and browse, and how do we do it safely? And you know, I love that you're also looking at what is supportive of staff and what's keeping the community safe. So there's a million things you juggle. Um, I just wanted to. Uh, just so I didn't lose sight of our non-agenda public comments from Ms. Russell, who was inquiring about um, the contactless pickup at Carmel Valley. And I know, you know, many of us that run agencies and especially the library um, and the city, you know, it is, it is something I know you're watching closely, but I'm wondering if you just might address um, any thoughts on contactless pickup, um, just to her question, if you might be able to um, acknowledge yeah, absolutely. It Thank was, you. you know, there was a lot of things that we wanted to continue um, that we started during the pandemic and really are trying to continue some of those things. The bad part is, is it's really down to capacity. Um, we are very, very thin uh, in staffing. And so it's that having you know people in the building and doing inside services and then still doing the outdoor uh curbside pickup was um it's a it's pretty staff intensive which is you know i think a lot of times people don't realize um so we just have not been able to do both but if there is ever anyone who does not want to come into the building and has things on hold, they can always still call the branch and they can make accommodations for people. And so the staff are absolutely willing to do that. Um, and, you know, the safety is and customer service is our number one priority. So I know that the staff would be more than happy to work with, with any patrons that um, can't uh, come into the building. Great, thank you, thank you, Misty, for addressing that. And again, I, I have seen first and foremost how if library staff go above and beyond. And I hope, um, Ms. Russell, if you are tuning in to hear that, you know that we are thinking of your safety. And um, thank you, Misty. Also acknowledging the staffing, I think for many of us, just even when we're out in the public, you know, it is there is less staff, and everyone that is there is doing their best, and oftentimes doing one and a half or two jobs and balancing lots of things, but. Thank you for offering to make accommodations for those folks that need it, which has always been our, our policy and our wish. Thank you so much for yeah. addressing um, Okay. Hey, Misty, quick yes. question oh. on one of your earlier announcements. Where do we find details on the Robert Frost event? So that's gonna be on our website. And I believe I have been out this past week, but I do believe that they have already started um, advertising that and have it up there. Um, but we'll also make sure to send you all um, the details as well. Oops. So we'll get Tricia and make sure you get you get all the details. Thanks. Thank you, Misty. Before we move to our special, special guests, anything else on reopening, Misty? Or did we want to move forward uh, with Moni and Mark? Nope, that's, that's it. That's kind of the update. We'll keep you updated as we go along um, and let you know as other locations open, but um, that's where we are right now. So thank you to great, uh, Moni and great, Mark. Yeah. Great work moving forward with uh, strategies behind reopening. I know it is uh, not an easy task to do. <laughs> I know you don't get a lot of sleep thinking about it. <laughs> All right. Moni and Mark, thank you for joining us. Oh, what a treat.
All right, presentation on the Rebellious Misbreed Project. Are y'all ready? Just need you to unmute when you are ready. I swear we're here. We just uh, had to unmute ourselves. Hi, everyone. It's good to see you all. Uh, my name is Moni Tong. I'm the service area manager of sciences here at the San Diego Central Library. Here's my colleague, Mark Cherry. Hi, I'm Mark, and I'm the uh, uh, manager of the uh, humanities section. Yeah, and today uh, we're really excited to be um, introducing the rebellious Miss Breed, San Diego Public Library and the Japanese American Incarceration. Um, we're gonna go ahead and share our screen shortly. Be just one moment. Can everyone see our presentation? Fantastic. Okay. So this fall, from September to December, we are going to be hosting um, a series of programs and events reflecting on the experiences of Japanese Americans during World War II. Um, the programs are going to be exploring themes of social justice, activism, and the power of the written word. Um, and the goal of this project is to raise awareness and encourage discussion of historical and contemporary issues faced um, by marginalized voices, and in this case, specifically um, the AAPI community. We have a big quarter planned ahead of us. Um, we have nearly 30 events uh, scheduled, including scholarly lectures, performances, author talks, films, youth programs, um, and a wonderful exhibition that's going to be uh, in our ninth floor art gallery. Next slide, please. Oh, yep. Technical difficulties, one moment. So the Miss Breed um, in our title um, is of course referring to Clara Estelle Breed, um, former San Diego Public Library director and youth services librarian who was with San Diego Public Library for 42 years. Um, Miss Breed had um, an incredible career, uh, founded the Sarah uh, Cooperative System, expanded library services, um, uh, was uh, leading the charge for the construction of the Central Library um, on E Street. Uh, she was named Woman of the Year in San Diego, 1955. But she's probably most famous for advocating on behalf of the Japanese Americans who were incarcerated during World War II. Um, she's known for keeping active correspondence with the children who, um, who she met as a children's librarian. She would send them letters, books, personal items, and they sent her letters back. Um, instead, she was really a, a lifeline to many of the children, um, mainly at the Poston uh, camp in Arizona. Uh, Ms. Breed gave the many letters that she received to one of the children she corresponded with Elizabeth Kikuchi Yamada, um, who then donated the entire collection to the Japanese American National Museum in Los Angeles. Next slide, please. So this fall, we have the pleasure of hosting part of that collection um, on the ninth floor uh, in an exhibition called Call to Serve, Clara E. Breed and the Japanese American Incarceration. Um, there will be items on display from, from the museum in addition to the Japanese American Historical Society of San Diego. Um, it is co-curated with 
the um, with our project scholar. Her name is Susan Hasegawa. She's a professor at San Diego City College um, and also co-curated by Linda Salem, who uh, is a special collections librarian at San Diego State, um, who is the keeper of the Clara Breed Children's Book Collection at State. Um, we are going to have an opening reception September 18th from noon to 2 p.m., which I hope you can all, all make it to. And next slide, please. So another component of this fall is going to be letter, letter writing. Um, we have a wonderful collaboration with Fresno County Public Library in which we are inviting youth in San Diego and Fresno uh, to write to one another in response to prompts we have pre-written on postcards. Um, you can see this, uh, one of our very talented uh, library staffers in, on our marketing team uh, drew this wonderful illustration of Miss Breed. Um, I'm, I love it. Uh, I hope that we can get a poster of it, um, but we're going to have postcards for youth available in Fresno and San Diego. Some of the prompts include, when I see someone being treated unfairly, I can. Um, I can help my friends feel safe by. When I think something needs to change, I can. So um, our hope is that we'll get, um, we'll get many postcards back that we can then put on display at uh, the Fresno Libraries and San Diego Libraries. We're going to uh, conclude this event by having a virtual author discussion with Cynthia Grady. Uh, she wrote the picture book, Write to Me, which you'll, um, you'll recognize from one book, one San Diego. And adults can also participate, including all of you, I hope. Uh, we're going to have a letter writing program um, uh, called the Letters Project. Library patrons are going to be encouraged to send in letters, either electronically or hard copy to the library about their experiences during the COVID-19 pandemic. This is a partnership with the library's public technology services team. Uh, they're going to be digitized and then made available on our digital archive. So I'm really, I'm really excited about this project. Um, I'm curious to see what people are going to write into this. So, and then uh, for our project's keynote speaker, um, I'm going to invite Mark to come and and speak um, about this part of the project. I am. Uh, I'm really excited. Um, I am biased because um, I'm a fan of uh, Renee Tajima Pena, but I'm really excited for our keynote and I'll let uh, Mark take it away from here. All right. Hello. As uh, courageous as Miss as as Miss as Miss Breed was, uh, she did a wonderful thing. How, however, uh, where there's 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 going there's going to be lots of things about her, but most but most of the things the overwhelming majority of uh, the, the events will be on Jap on Japanese Americans, especially essentially the uh, survivors, their children, and the uh, connections that uh, that can be, that can be made uh, between what what happened then and and some some of the things that are uh, going on. So to uh, uh, that extent, as Mona, as Mon says, we are very, very, very excited, excited to have, to have uh, Renee serve as our keynote, uh, uh, keynote person. And uh, we, we are uh, hoping that it's the beginning of, of, of this, of this, uh, what, what uh, we are call, calling the uh, collaborative the Clara, the Clara Reed Civil Liberties Mem Memorial Lecture. We would like to see, and we are hoping that this will become this will become an uh, annual lecture uh, that the library will support about li li literacy, activism, social struggle, 
and uh, and uh, we we couldn't think of anyone else to start. And, and when I, when this film are about, uh, she also she also writes. She's a professor. She's an en endowed professor at uh, at at UCLA, and she covers uh, immigration, race, ethnicity, uh, gender, social 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 justice as Moni says she she's an Oscar nominated filmmaker and she's and, and with with her most recent 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 work being that she she was the uh, producer and show runner for the uh, Asian, Asian American PBS series that was that came on in uh, 2020 so we are very 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 very, very excited in addition, uh, another another core e event is the uh, is is the uh, film is the, the film series we'll be doing, and we we are partnered with Pacific Arts Movement. Uh, they were, they were the folks who do, who do the uh, San Diego Asian Film Festival, where you can see films uh, uh, by or about or featuring uh, Asia, Asian American, but also. But also Asians from uh, other places, and it's and it's and it's one of the more uh, respected uh, festivals in the country. Their artistic d director is uh, Brian Brian uh, uh, Hugh. He's planning a, a major uh, film series for us. That will be every month from September to October to November to December on the second on the second and fourth Monday of of those uh, months, um, uh, there'll be there'll be speakers for 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 each for each for each film to lead the Q Q and A after the film. So we are truly excited, and uh, and those two events is just the uh, tip of the iceberg in terms of what's going on. There's lots of events, and as I said, most of them about the. Uh, Japanese American themselves, uh, the people then, the survivor, the, the survivors, the descendants. Uh, so we are truly excited. And now Moni is going to come back and close the uh, presentation for us. Thanks, Mark. Um, so as as you can see, uh, this was a truly a community effort. We, um, we've had a lot of help from so many scholars, experts, part community partners. Um, we are just so grateful for um, all the people who have contributed to the rebellious misbreed. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm just uh, so grateful for for all the contributions that the that the community has made. Next slide. Um, we just wanted to thank California Humanities that um, without them this this uh, project would not have been possible. Um, we'd also like to thank the San Diego Public Library. Foundation um, and friends of the Central Library. We can go to the next slide, Mark. And one more slide. We are working on our website. It is coming soon, um, but you can check back there for more updates and for the full event listing. And I think that's that's it for us. Um, do you have any last words, Mark? Sure. Do you want to come back? Sure. Thanks so much for having us here and letting us share our project with all of you. Oh, so. uh, I would say I, I, I forgot to uh, mention and thank God that Muni, Muni mentioned it. Uh, uh, you could tell that we are very, very excited about when they talk to you, uh, come, come into our library. She's uh, extremely friendly to public libraries, uh, but uh, we, we couldn't, uh, we could never hope to have when they come to the library with, without without the uh, the uh, support of the of the foundation. 
when we when we contacted Pat, Patrick, we said, "Hey, we want to bring this major speaker here." Uh, and he said, "Go ahead. We'll uh, we'll uh, support it, and uh, we are very grateful." Uh, this this would be a, a very different event without some of the big things like the uh, the exhibit that we're doing, and of course, again, having Renee uh, touching my pen here. It's gonna be it's exciting. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. you Fantastic questions? presentation, Moni and Mark. Thank you. What an undertaking. Uh, 30 events. You've got all the top partners in there. Um, want to acknowledge you for, gosh, really bringing in some big names. I'm familiar with many of them and not all of them, but I can just say as a fourth generation Japanese American, uh, both my parents um, and my grandparents and many family members were interned in the camps. Um, nothing was camp or fun about it. Um, and I think this is a, just a great educational opportunity to raise awareness and bring the community together. So um, thank you. Thank you for your efforts. It looks absolutely amazing. Um, and the timeliness, I think one of our commissioners also commented, it couldn't be more timely. Um, but uh, thank you to all of the project partners for participating and fantastic presentation. Any other questions for Moni or Mark? Really exciting. Congratulations to you too and the team of uh, folks putting this together. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wendy. And um, um, I, uh, I like how you mentioned that there was nothing uh, camp about it. One of the um, one of the things that we were very careful about is the, the language that we're using throughout the project. So we're taking um, uh, we're taking our cue from Den Show. Uh, which is a nonprofit um, that shares and disseminates information um, about the incarceration. And so um, we have been using words that uh, they have recommended in order to accurately portray history. So uh, thank you so much for, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to both of you for your leadership on this. We really appreciate it. And thank you, Misty, for you, we look at the programming that the library continues to do. And we often talk about, you know, it's more than just books. It's more than technology. You look at this programming um, and the fact that you guys, you are bringing this to the community and to a wider audience that for many, it was just a small paragraph in a textbook. So thank you for, for your efforts on all of that. Hey, um. Thank you, Wendy. The one thing, you know, this is, I think, just indicative of, of, you know, education and information is that, you know, being from Alabama, I never learned about this in school. And so, um, but Moni and Mark have done such a fantastic job with planning and coordinating this and really bringing it together. It was supposed to happen last fall. Uh, and yeah, and so it's been delayed a little bit and thankfully California Humanities let us push it off um, so that we could really, uh, you know, see it the way that it needed to be. It's, a, it's something that I think would have suffered if it was all virtual. And so, um, but yeah, I mean, these guys have done amazing and, and I always tell everybody, you know, the staff and the team at SCPL, you know, they just blow it out of the park every time I just get out of the way and let them go. So <laughs> the best thing I could do is be supportive and get out of the way. So um, thank you guys. Thank, thank you, you so much. Okay. Thank okay. you. Fantastic Bye. presentation. Or right. anything else from Misty? Otherwise, I'll move it forward to any commission or comment. Um, Wendy, I just had a couple of things just to remind you all if you haven't done your renewal. Um, uh, board renewal to do that. I would love to have everybody, um, all of you back on the board again for two more years would be fantastic. Um, and then I just wanted to let you know, we know we're going back to in-person meetings in October. So the October um, will be our first in-person again. Um, as you know, per the Brown Act, we do have to have um, in-person meetings. So I do know that there are a couple of bills that have been introduced 
um, that they are considering uh, that will allow for, um, you know, virtual meetings and more participation from the public virtually as well. So we're going to keep an eye um, on that because I think that this has been really, um, you know, not being able to be in person. You always want to see people in person, but this has also been, you know, uh, has boosted um, attendance and I think in a lot of ways is a lot easier for you all than having to come downtown every single month so um, I'm at least hoping that maybe we can look at some type of hybrid uh, situation and we'll have that opportunity in the future but we'll we'll keep you up to date on how that progresses. Misty is the Brown Act uh, pertinent to us because we're affiliated with the city is that the only reason? Yeah yeah and so you are subject to Brown Act um, rules but because that's, you know, that's the way that the charter is written. So. Yeah, I'm hoping that we can move forward with both um, an in-person and virtual option. I know that that's what we're doing mm -hmm. for our uh, San Diego Rotary board meetings. Um, for those that are not able or feel um, un it, it, that it's not a match for them to come in person for whatever reason can zoom in virtually and those that are able or interested in attending in person can do so. Um, but thank you, Misty. I know she's looking at a lot of different options. And again, we would hope that our commissioners are interested and able to continue for another two years if you haven't already had a chance to, uh, <laughs> no pressure. Uh, but we do thank you for all of your volunteer leadership. I know that you all um, have very, very, very busy jobs and lives. And we thank you for your continued volunteer service. If, if it does in fact need to end, we really do appreciate all of your um, time and thoughtfulness. Okay, Misty, anything else before we move to commissioner comment? Nothing from me, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Misty. Um, fellow commissioners, I will open up to any comment questions or anything else. Anyone? All right, well, if there's no comment, is there any other business? Okay, well, I will officially adjourn this meeting at 1.22. You have eight minutes back to scarf your lunch or answer 17 more emails. Uh, but I do appreciate you, uh, fellow commissioners. Um, again, special thanks to our foundation and our friends and really to our library staff who just um, really just do such amazing, amazing work in the community um, and to our community folks for Zooming in and writing in, you are always welcome. So thanks everyone, have a great afternoon and this meeting is adjourned, thank you. Thanks Wendy, thanks, thanks everyone. Wendy.